Aloha, this is Captain Matt on Tatiki Queen. Uh, we're here in uh, Waikiki. I just wanted to make this video uh, outline all the uh, work and in renovations improvements I've, I did to this boat over the last, what is it, six months, six and a half months. Um, I've done around about 470 hours so far. Uh, it's almost finished, but yeah, I'm gonna go through each, each sort of section and uh, then at the end, um, when it's all detailed, all ready to go, uh, we'll, we'll show you some of that footage as well. The boat is a 2001 Crest Morrill 40 ton aluminium pontoon. Uh, this is what it looked like when I joined the project. Uh, my business partner had added the faux grass roof. Uh, he'd redone the electrical system. He bought two used Yamaha F90X outboards and unfortunately he sold the trailer. Uh, it was actually docked behind his friend's house in Hawaii Kai, which is about 10 miles east of Waikiki. We arranged for a temporary slip at the Alawai Marina, so I drove it back from Hawaii Kai. Uh, Mark and my buddy Jason came with me. Uh, yeah, conditions were quite good that day. As a pontoon, you know, we have to be really careful with the sea conditions. Other than actually the port engine overheated after about 20 minutes, so I just was just on starboard the rest of the way. Uh, the first task I took on was to grind down the ends of the screws that poked through the roof. There were hundreds of them, and as you can imagine, that was not the most pleasant of tasks. For the roof, I used the thin bamboo sheeting uh, you can get from Home Depot. I think I used about 10, 10 or 12 sheets, perhaps, and I stapled it to those cross, cross members of timber you see there. Uh, next, I added the bamboo sheeting to the, to the sides of the front. From memory, that stuff's about eight feet high, so it was roughly just cut in half, maybe a little, little less. It's roughly four feet from the deck to the, to the first rail. I painted, I spray painted the frame behind it, and then I used uh, just thin, thin black wire to um, secure it, secure it to the frame there. Now I turned to the rope. There was probably close to a mile of it already wrapped around the frame like that. Uh, it was all moldy, and the kid that did it had all these really ugly looking knots everywhere so after I pressure washed it then I started going back and fixing up these ugly knots and I I bought another 1800 feet of rope to add to the areas that were missing or whatever and this next part is where I made you know a fairly reasonable mistake I realized I had to seal it and possibly paint it so I you know went to Home Depot and bought what I thought was clear deck sealer it ended up being yellow, so obviously that looked awful. Uh, so then I ended up getting this semi-transparent brown. Because it was semi-transparent, I had to do two or three coats to make it look solid. It took a, lo it took a long time to do all that, but I think the end result you know, came out pretty good. Uh, the next thing was to tidy up the console. So sanded that down, uh, sprayed a coat of, um, it's called nutmeg, the color. Yeah, then I had a student paint a mural in the front of it. I guess, yeah, her version of the Tiki Queen. At this point, it was certainly starting to look better, but there were still a lot of unfinished areas, uh, including installation of those rigid fuel tanks, uh, and more importantly, construction of the restroom. A carpenter buddy, Josh, helped me uh, basically build the whole thing. You can see we did the framework, then I think it's half a quarter inch ply. Then I decided to wrap it in that uh, thin bamboo stuff, which is absolute shit to work with. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, wasn't too long before we got it all secured. Uh, we ended up going with a gate latch, uh, which I ended up having to just replace with a normal door handle because people couldn't figure it out. I'd wanted to build some kind of uh, like bar type thing on the uh, starboard side, basically to offset the weight that we'd added with the uh, restroom and also the you know holding tank, fresh water tank. Uh, at one point I thought about buying like a regular size table and cutting it in half then also maybe using a surfboard and then finally we just hit on this simple idea of just let's just make this uh, so it's roughly i think 150 inches long at the moment we, i have four bar stools at it but it could easily fit six people in there i'd say i would occasionally take the boat down to the other end uh, there's a work dock there and it's near where my uh, business partner was uh, doing his project and I had tools, all that sort of thing. Um, you know, obviously I checked the fuel before I left, uh, unbeknownst to me. The engines are actually cross-fed, so I'm checking the starboard tank, which was 
feeding the port engine as, and I was only using the starboard engine. So anyway, I ran out of gas and ended up uh, halfway down behind this boat. Thankfully, the winds were favorable. Uh, another day, Josh and I attempted to repair this gap in the, in the deck here. Uh, so we made a piece and Josh is like just wailing on it with a mini sledge. Unfortunately, I guess the gap there was for a reason. The hydraulic line for the steering ran through there and we basically ripped it off. On one particular day, I ran out of gas. Another day, I had no steering. There are a few more areas where I needed to repair either the frame or add more rope. Uh, added some more bamboo as well. Uh, but yeah, by this point, it was, it was starting to look pretty good. I painted around the captain's chair and the holding tank's storage. And then I decided to get a, a full, full size chart of Oahu and stick that on there and then started decorating the restroom. We had a pretty big storm that particular day. Uh, this is another area where in hindsight I probably could have done this differently. Uh, there were a lot of gaps on the deck uh, so I had a box of deck mate and I basically filled in the gaps around um, the white stuff was existing deck mate and then this sort of beige thing is slightly different. It's lighter and it's slightly higher. Um, I did this for the purpose of installing um, some marine carpet. It wasn't too difficult to sort of patchwork around these smaller areas. Uh, the rolls ended up being six feet wide. So I had one at full width and then another section at about four feet. Since then, uh, a gap, you can see that seam, a gap emerged. And what ended up happening was because those, those beige uh, tiles were lighter, I guess the adhesive was too strong, it ended up lifting off the actual deck in a, in a few areas. So that was another issue we had to try and fix. At this time, I should point out, I've worked quite a bit on um, the now canceled Magnum PI, but this last season I did a few days as a stand-in on the La Mariana set. The production designer and the set decorators did a magnificent job on that set. I don't know if um, subliminally that had an effect on me, but when it came time to do the sort of more decorative stuff, I guess I certainly drew on what I'd, what I'd seen on that set. I decided to do an inlay on the bar and then um, fill it with uh, epoxy resin. Yeah, I bought this adhesive with, you know, distressed timber pattern. Then I bought a book called The Book of Tiki. It's actually quite an expensive book, but I found one that had, had water damage. Um, luckily, I was able to salvage probably 98% of it. Uh, so I went through, I cut out all these different um, images of you know tiki heads and restaurants and whatever else was in there then using uh, wallpaper glue I stuck it to this distressed timber pattern then did the epoxy uh, unfortunately just with the nature of the boat and it being heavier on one side than the other it didn't pour evenly uh, it was kind of um, shallower at the back I uh, also didn't seal it properly so it started leaking and then when I let it to set I think it rained, uh, and so then it got all this, this cratering. was able to salvage it, it just sanded the whole thing back, you know, tried to prop it up a little bit under the legs to make it a little more level, and then did another coat. There were several, like, full-page designs in the book, and so I cut them out, I mounted them to foam core board, and then I did a coating of resin on top of that as well. I got my buddy Ed, who does uh, car stereos, to come out and help me uh, wire the uh, flush button for the head and also to help install some 12 volt uh, strip lighting. We put it in the uh, restroom and then we did it along the top of these sections in the roof here. I think I got about 150 feet all up, put it up everywhere, it runs along the top as you can see there and this is what it looks like at night. The next job was to go down to Kahi Marine Center and uh, and haul the boat out. The main purpose was to get a survey done and also to get some work done on the engines. Uh, we ended up replacing uh, both impellers, uh, both water pumps and just you know tidied it up a bit. I think they charged me about $800 to get it pressure washed and all in all up including the surveyor a two-day stay there was about about $2,000. Okay, so we came back, I got the survey, the bar was all completed, I sprayed the other side of the console and tidied all that up, I finished uh, decorating inside the restroom because I had uh, a stack more uh, cutouts to, to, to stick up. I used it to store all this junk and I had a lot by this point. And here you can see is basically all the paint, whatever I used. So I ended up designing the name signs myself. I took a 
image of distressed timber with the orange and then I cut out a font. I then did a second layer to make it look kind of blocky in 3D like that. Uh, and then what I did was print it out. I printed it out on four by three feet mounted poster board from FedEx. And I ended up cutting out each word by hand with a razor blade. Uh, zero out of 10, do not recommend. After I'd finished cutting out the words, I basically painted the back, backside black and around where I'd cut and then did a layer of resin. Um, the day I was doing it, I had, had it all out on the deck. I had them on the dock drying. I went to get a drink or something like that. I came back. One of the tiki words was missing. About a week later, I was just walking back near the slip and I saw it on the ground. It was too far gone and it stank because it had been soaking in the alawai water for a week. So I ended up just printing out a new word new tiki word and then with the leftover space did some qr codes and two smaller full full length the tiki queen signs i mixed up some uh, leftover paint from the mural to kind of get to close to bamboo color to paint uh, the white sections you know in between the gaps and the letters there and then what i did was i got these adhesive backed uh, cable mounts i scraped the adhesive section off and then uh, using goop, I, I stuck them to the back of the signs. And then I used uh, cable ties to secure uh, the words, the name signs, to, the, to that bamboo section on the front. I think I did six on the tiki, four on the word da. But obviously the queen had a lot more and it was extremely difficult to try to loop them through without pulling the whole thing out. Uh, that was probably one task I should have should have asked a buddy to come down and help. So the engine still had a lot of work to be done, and obviously we had the issue of have, not having a trailer. Uh, at the very end, right up near the uh, brake wall, there's this small section of it's like a mostly sand but a bit of coral, and so literally I would drive the boat up there, and the mechanic would have to stand in the water to work on the engines. Um, we didn't like change oil or do anything like that. It was just um, changing the spark plugs, water separator, low pressure fuel pumps, one electric pump, um, clean the injectors, replace one injector. There was just, you know, a lot of things like that. We also installed these metal fuel tanks. We couldn't weld the filler cap to the collar on the fuel tanks. So we just used that thick hose and some clamps. We also installed emergency shutoff valves. And the tanks themselves are secured with uh, ratchet straps. Yeah, I haven't had any issues with it at all. This particular day, I was waiting for Simao, my mechanic, to arrive. Uh, there were at least two times where, due to unfavorable winds, I had to jump in the water with my shoes on to make sure I wasn't being blown into uh, the yachts nearby. Uh, we finally came up for a permanent slip, so I had to move the boat from the temporary slip except the slip they gave us, which is right on the end, uh, just right near actually where we worked on the boat. Thankfully, you can request a remore, so they just sent me back to my the original spot we were in. I bought these vintage Hawaiian uh, photos on eBay. Uh, what I did was I scanned them, then I had just printed them out on just regular like photos. Again, I glued them to foam core board and did a coating of resin on it. Then what I did was, again, I grabbed those uh, cable mounts, but I sort of flipped it over. And so the side that would normally have the adhesive, I basically just screwed that into the door there. Using goop, we just stick them up against the back side of the um, cable mount. I uh, used some tape to hold them in place, but yeah, that that's held up pretty well. And they look like tiles. A lot of people think they're actually tiles. I also added in some more rope around the console there and also in the ceiling. The section at the front of the boat, especially right behind the seats, was a little dark. So I got these string lights, again 12 volt, and just wrapped it around the top section of, uh, of rope there. Uh, I mean, it was a bit finicky and some of the LEDs don't work, but overall, you know, it's not a bad product. I'd found these solar lights, solar tiki lights. You can see yeah, you can see I've gooped some hooks and then the light just literally hooks on there like that. Pretty straightforward. I've got to charge them. 
solar charge them, but that's the only issue with it. We mounted the tiki heads. Uh, it has this flexible strip, metal strip stuff, and so it's just screwed into the back of the tiki head and then into the back of the, the pole there. Uh, the next was the gate. There's actually another business just down from me, and they installed vinyl signs over covering the gate. Uh, I also wanted to do a light at the top, like a sensor light. Initially, I did the sensor light, security sign, and a QR code, and then my friend uh, Donald he has a um, industrial printer. He printed these out for me on a thick vinyl. And so it's been good. You know, get some foot traffic, had some had some queries that way. The engines are running great. The one remaining issue is to replace the trim motor in the port engine. So I either have to haul it out or find some way to lift the rear end up to create enough clearance to get at the uh, trim, trim motor. And that's pretty much it. That's literally every picture I took of this thing in the last six months I've been working on it. Would I do it again, knowing what I what I know now? Probably not. It was an epic project. I basically did it all by myself. My business partner got sidetracked with another project, made some new friends along the way, got to go out and see the sunset quite a bit. So overall, it's been good. Yeah, we'll be fully up and running by spring break. So I was going to include more footage, drone footage of me doing trips, but this is already 15 minutes. So I think what I'll do is create a new video. So look for the link. I'll put the link at the end of this video here for you to see that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.